Welcome to this Friday edition of Collider Movie Talk, a very special edition of the show because the summer is winding down. It's the end of August, and that means we have to recap summer 2019 at the box office. What were our favorite movies? There's obviously not a ton enough time to talk about everything, but we're each going to list our favorite three movies of summer 2019 and then throw in a few honorable mentions to spread the love around a little more. I'm going to share my favorites, and you're also going to get favorites from Gray Drake and Simon Thompson. Hi, hi. Hey. What's Woo! doing? Summer. Summer. Yeah, it feels like summer in here because it's sweaty in the studio. I love the fact that it's called Best of the Summer. It should be pronounced Best of the Summer? It wasn't exactly a stellar year. Best of the Summer? I don't know about that. Well, we had a few good... Well, we only had to pick three, for God's sake. They're uh, good. Yeah. I, I, I struggled. Had a pretty Did lengthy you? list. I struggled. Really? Well, Gotta be honest with you. Tough. All right. That's yeah. very surprising. I'm curious to actually get into okay. the conversation about your picks. But, Gray, let's start with you first. One movie from your list. Go. Biggest movie of the summer, Avengers Endgame. Hands okay. down. Like, easy pick. But to me, uh, a lot was riding on that movie, and I was just waiting with bated breath like most of the world was it was so satisfying and it remains so satisfying mm. even some of the things that don't make sense after the fact like it's like caps time travel let's not get started right now but <laughs> but but we he picked up the hammer i'm happy i will say a lot of the stuff that on first watch i wasn't quite sure if it made sense a lot of it has been explained in yeah. satisfying ways maybe not you know like super sound ways that make sense in the real world but they were explained enough that in the existence of the mcu i'm like okay i'm, I'm, I'm on board for that yeah well, perry i'm sure that if you didn't understand things there are plenty of men on the internet who would very happily <laughs> explain it to you, Are possibly there? on social media. Didn't know that. <laughs> Just in case you weren't aware. This one Teach is us. actually <laughs> still my favorite movie of 2019. Both, well, I had told everyone that, so I didn't want to repeat myself, but I'm just going to reinforce your choice because I think this was not just one of the best movies we got this summer, but it truly is one of the best movies we've seen all year. And I will be beating that drum for Robert Downey Jr. to get that Oscar nomination God, come award season. Wouldn't that be amazing? I it, would love to see it. I really would love to see it happen. I think that it would. I haven't seen anything quite like it, I think, since like Lord of the Rings mm. was getting all those nominations where it's such a popular movie that really just riveted everyone and captured our hearts was actually recognized by the Academy. Yeah. <laughs> so I would love to see that happen, too. And you know, I, I, I did really enjoy Endgame. I mean, that was a great summer movie. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I think now with Marvel, the movies that I most enjoy are the, the ones they put out that are a bit different to mm. the ones that deliver oh, yeah. the, the bread and butter movies, the yeah. ones that deliver exactly what you would expect they would deliver. Very curious. What are some of your favorites? Uh, Ant-Man, big fan of that. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Strange. Uh, characters fundamentally that I didn't have any affinity or attachment to, like Spider-Man, you know, I was a big fan of that growing up. But there are other ones that, that weren't really sort of in my pop culture lexicon that I think Marvel has... And Guardians of the Galaxy, yes. which I'll be honest yes. with you, I thought that movie was going to be the worst ideas that Marvel <laughs> have ever had. And I've spoken to a couple of people who are being involved in the making of that movie, and a lot of them thought it was going to suck too. They weren't entirely <laughs> sure that was going to work. That was a bit of a gamble. But the movies like that that are a bit different, they're the ones that really kind of they elevate it for me. Black Panther last year was another mm -hmm. one. But Endgame cannot deny that that's certainly delivered. And everybody on the plane when I was coming back from London yesterday, everybody was mainlining <laughs> Marvel like it was going out of fashion. Back to back to back Marvel. When, everybody was watching Endgame. When I was on my way to North Bend with Haley Fouch last week, and at the end of the flight, I happened to have noticed that she was watching watching Endgame and I was that big jerk who was busy looking over her shoulder because the second that end battle kicks in, yeah. what else in it's the amazing. world would I rather look at? So yeah. it, even Nothing. in silence, when I couldn't hear a single thing, it still plays so, so on a teeny tiny screen, still plays great. Absolutely. What is your first pick, Simon? Uh, Rocket Man. I'll be Ooh, honest with nice. you. It's a movie that really kind of divided a lot of people this year. Some people were still smarting from Bohemian Rhapsody, you know, the great Battle of Rhapsody 2019. <laughs> How can we forget that? Um, but I mean, I, I really loved it. I'm a big fan of Dexter Fletcher's work. I'm a big fan of Taron. This Elton John, I know I'm British, but it's not really an artist that I, he, <laughs> I grew up with a lot of his music, but I didn't have a close affinity with him. What they did with this as a non-regular biopic, they turned it into this big fantasy musical kind of thing. They really shook 
shook it up, I think was so brilliantly creative and is so different to anything that we've seen out there on the big screen in the last couple of years. And certainly when it comes to biopics, mm -hmm. we don't see this kind of thing very often. It, it, it really sold it to me. And also it wasn't just about the lead cast. For me, it was such an ensemble piece. I mean, the support from like Jamie Bell and yeah. you know uh, Richard and, and Bryce were just phenomenal supporting cast. Even the guy that played Elton's father, it was just so much class on screen. It really delivered something that was far exceeded any of my expectations. I couldn't agree yeah. more. It's, it's still up there for me. And I'm happy to see that because after Bohemian Rhapsody came out, yeah. I feel like maybe a lot of people out there might have expected all of these other music movies mm. to make that much at the box office. And when some of them haven't done so well this year, when I think they deserve a lot more, I was happy to at least see that movie kind of open up strong and, and carry on it's for a little while it's longer. It's got legs. I mean, I spoke to Dexter on Tuesday and he was saying that this movie is coming out on like blue, it's out on digital, it's out on Blu-ray and DVD like next week, but it's still playing in movie theaters and mm -hmm. people are still going to see it in movie theaters, which yeah. is great. And it's good. It's, it's such a good. hard, it's such a hard balance to make a musical grounded in reality mm -hmm. but also have this fantastic element and there that whole sequence that takes place at the troubadour oh is God. one of my favorite things i've seen all year on screen it just really stayed with me yeah. so good yeah it's one of those movies mm -hmm. that i mean I, I i got to send an advanced copy of it and i've gone through and i've watched some of those sequences again and with the extras getting behind the scenes just a, it's a, just such a good movie i'll never cool. forget when that first trailer came out and everyone's like whoa why is it so fantasy heavy how is this ever going to work <laughs> But those two yeah. elements were just, they were blended, I think, fairly perfectly together. Yeah, yeah I, I, for me, it was, it was just, it was, it was a br brilliant piece of cinema this year. All right, which one should I go? I feel like I should stick in the, the music genre. And the first one I will mention is Wild Rose. And, Aww. you know, talking about uh, Oscar potentials before with Avengers Endgame, mm. this is one of those smaller movies that I think needed to make more noise at the box office than I wish it had. but. I'm not giving up on this one. This is a friggin' beautiful story about someone who is so desperate to achieve her dream, but it's not, it's, it's a, an unusual movie in that it's not like she has to say, like, I'm gonna overcome this specific thing in order to <laughs> achieve my dream. She has very real responsibilities that she needs to balance along with achieving that dream. Mm -hmm. And that felt like a far richer and more grounded story to me, but Jesse Buckley. Jesse yeah. freaking Buckley is the next big thing. If you are not familiar with her, Go watch Collider Ladies Night. Go watch Wild Rose and pretty much any YouTube video where she sings. She is phenomenal. I want, I mean, I will actually say at this point in time, based on what I've seen, she would be one of my picks for one of the best actress nominations. And then on top of that, really? if the original song Glasgow does not get a best original song nomination, I'm going to be very upset. I think that's where the movie is going to hit at the Oscars. I think that if they do the right publicity campaign, that that song is going to get a nomination. I feel like it, it might be a little bit too much to hope for that the Academy's mm. going to recognize such a small movie that didn't really make waves with audiences. I know. Uh, Every but now it and would again be they nice. do, Once, Well, there's always one pick, Once right? Once was another one. But it was just in the song category, just wasn't it? Just in the song. And that's where I think it has a real shot. It, you're right about it. They already what started. It, I got an email about it the other day. Well, good <laughs> for them, because it, it, what a charming, wonderful movie I saw it at Toronto last year and just, like, had a smile on my face a mile wide. It, but then it sort of came out in theaters and might be there now, but I'm not sure and what happened to it. Blink, it, went all, it. it went all over the place. Yeah. And I believe this is a Neon movie and Neon has actually picked up some of my favorite releases of the yes. year, not to derail us a little, but between Wild Rose, um, they also had Loose and they've Loose, got The Lodge yeah. coming out later this year. They just, they know what to pick at this point. Yeah, Neon Man is Seriously, cool. I applaud really them. Cool. Loose is a great movie. Loose is so good. So good. I mean, see, I, I was a little sad when none of us had it on here, I but know. it really, it just got bumped out of this list yeah, for me. Yeah. yeah, I had a lot of honorable mentions, okay. by the way. I narrowed them all down. <laughs> Depending um, on how quickly we can rattle through them, maybe we'll mention I'll a few say, more. No, 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 we'll say <laughs> later. Um, What's your next pick, Ray? But actually, this pick surprises me. Uh, one of the movies I was so deeply satisfied by was Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. That makes me happy. <laughs> Interesting. I just loved it so much because we've seen a lot of PG-13 movies, uh, horror movies come out so far. And I just thought they were mostly a snooze fest. They thought that they could have been done better. I had a lot of notes. Nobody asked me. I was very offended. And then Scary <laughs> Stories comes along. And even though Guillermo del Toro just produced it, I felt like 
the, the together that creative team really felt like the rest of his films, right? And so I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. Yeah. Way scarier than like Annabelle was. And I went home and was by myself and was turning lights on before I would go places. Wow. Like the mark of a great movie. I was really, as a fan of the stories, uh, I, I was surprised how much I remembered, and I was so impressed with how they strung them together and brought them to life. I will say I thought all, the ending was bad. I'm just saying. But All I could think of right now is what happens if, like, Graybell met the Pale Lady. <laughs> 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 I feel like the Pale Lady has some, some like, major junket potential for you. Yeah. I don't know what to do with it. But I, I actually don't tan and am the Pale Lady, <laughs> so I'm very deeply tied to that, all that these That was characters. one of my favorite sequences of the whole film. I wasn't a, a big fan of, like, the filler moments between the scare sequences, but those were some of the most creative scares that I've seen all year. Yeah, nobody was i don't i think i'm kind of alone on this one like a lot of people didn't like the tie that that bound the stories together mm. i actually thought that it was relatively inventive um as opposed to what we would have gotten had guillermo del toro and his team like not made this movie i think it would have been way worse if they left it to anybody else i think a lot of the effectiveness comes from the fact that guillermo constantly wants to do as much as possible uh, physical makeup mm -hmm. and physical mm. manifestation of, of his visions rather than just relying on CGI. And I think that adds the extra, extra bit of reality to it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Ooh, so, I mean, some of the, that imagery. Oh, the toe, the toe <laughs> is like grim. Ooh. Gross. Oh, God, I loved it. this movie. I loved it. Lo and, and especially like 11 year old me was so pumped. It's been a long time since I felt like that. <laughs> I do kind of wish I had a movie like this when I was this young. I mean, right? I actually, I did find this movie scarier and more body horror heavy than I had expected it to be. So I feel like maybe 11 year old shouldn't watch it, but like 11 year old <laughs> me would have been all in on it. And I feel like it would have been more appropriate for 11 year old me to have been obsessed with this movie rather than Scream. Yeah, well, you know what I keep telling people when they say like, should I see it? Should I let my kids? I go, this is for your tiny weirdos. <laughs> because that is who, what I would like to have seen when I was that age, similar to what you were just saying. So it's like if you are if you have a sensitive child, then no, because it's scary. But if you have a little tiny weirdo, that then That sounds yes. like a very reasonable way to classify this movie. My <laughs> response is always, you should never take my opinion on what to show your children. But sure, why not? And if you're a parent where you say your little weirdo might be able to watch it, if they go, yeah, it's like, you get your kid. Yeah. They're not going to be offended that you're calling them a weirdo. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can always say. love weirdos. All right, Simon, what's your second movie? Well, it's a movie that I was expecting not to really enjoy this year because I thought it was completely unnecessary, and it's Toy Story 4. <laughs> but this movie was, again, talking about movies delivering that you don't expect them to, after Toy Story 1, 2, and 3, which were very much about a little softer, they were family movies, there is some stuff in this that is twisted mm -hmm. and dark, and I absolutely loved it. It was almost like watching all your favorite characters from another movie put into a slightly alternative universe. Mm. And there were so many twists, so many great characters. It was a lot of characters, which concerned me because a lot of Hollywood movies tend to get overstuffed just so they can get the voices in, just so they can get butts on seats. And every single character, whether they were small or large, they had a role to play and they did it with a plum. And I think Forky, which was a character <laughs> I was not looking forward to seeing, because I thought, oh God, this looks like you've been made for merchandise. Right. Seriously, if Forky doesn't get nominated for an Oscar this year, <laughs> or at least host something, I will be devastated. It's, Tony Hale yeah. arrived in Hollywood with that. <laughs> That's Absolutely. A really good point. Like that they should have named Forky Pandery. And then it ended up being fantastic. Yeah, he absolutely. Was great. Yeah, it was right. just it was just such a satisfying <laughs> movie. And I'll be honest with you, I've seen a lot of comedies this year uh, and a lot of films in general, and a handful have got different reactions from audiences because we go and see them with with journalists and critics. And there are people who go to these screenings who are like, oh, oh, oh isn't that clever? You know, they want to impress and be heard <laughs> to laugh at things, or like, oh, this is an in joke. Oh, lol. <laughs> but actually, the laughs in Toy Story 4 were just people laughing because the film was damn funny yeah and it was just authentic laughter nobody trying to show off it was lovely more of that please 
Usually I get really mad when someone like says something out loud during a movie, but I almost want to sit next to you where you can just like do that snarky commenting on what, what the, the general uh, the general critic audience would usually say. You would hear some things. You would hear some things. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm seriously, it was just so I came out of that, I felt like a kid. It gave me that satisfaction like you when you're seeing scary movies growing up. It really made me feel like a kid. I was it, it gave me all the feelings and all the experiences that I want to get when I have a movie. Very few movies make me feel anything these days toy story 4 oh. made me feel a lot this one was such a nice surprise it's just because i think i was in the same boat as you were at the beginning where toy story 3 wraps up so beautifully and yeah. felt like such yeah. a perfect completion to their story that i really just didn't understand how can you possibly continue woody's character journey in mm -hmm. a way that would mean anything but it, this is so random, but it makes me think because most of the time when someone says a coming of age movie, you think about children growing up, but you're coming of age at every single stage in your life. So this movie just reflects a different stage in Woody's growth. Yep. And I think one, it can appeal to many kids out there for the same reasons that the Toy Story franchise has always done. But there are some very adult themes in this that really, really got to me as someone trying to pretend she's an adult. No, I mean, I mean your, your thoughts on this? I really liked it. Okay. I think all of us feel the same way. Like I've heard this from several people where you're like, four, you know, are you just, why don't you just take my wallet and don't waste my yeah. two hours, you know? And, and instead what we got was like, oh wow, there really is a way to continue this mm -hmm. and they'll probably be able to continue it even more. But Pixar seems committed to giving their creators time to make a story and that's the most important part is it especially with animation there's no rushing it but you got to spend time on that story yeah and it's interesting to hear them talk about the process like sometimes they'll all the all the writers will kind of go into a cabin and just sequester themselves and they'll just talk about all the possibilities and then they take time to create the world of the movie and it sh really shows mm -hmm. and it definitely showed in this one yeah. absolutely all the right. trailers didn't excite me at all but the movie totally got me one more before we get to our last sure. picks i have britney runs a marathon Yay! Nice. This, yeah. Good choice. Yeah, this movie. This movie really got me at Sundance this year where I saw it for the first time. I was enjoying myself, doing like really well most of the movie, and then it's just the third act kicks in and it wasn't just like tearing up or anything. Uh -oh. I was like in a puddle of my own tears for the entire third act of the movie. Ugly cry. Yeah, no, I, I had, it wasn't even just an ugly cry in the theater. I had to sit there through the credits and collect myself before I oh, walked out. I was surprised I how much this got me and also just how fun and joyful and hilarious it is from start to finish. <laughs> Jillian Bell so expertly balances the comedic sensibility that we've come to know and love her for over the course of her career thus far but also this movie has some real dramatic touches to it again it's it's kind of like another coming of age story and as someone who for many years has considered running a marathon and had a movie like this push me over the edge and actually sign up to do one yay november 3rd it's gonna happen oh and my God. It, it's in part because of this movie right after i saw this movie and okay. scott mance gave me an extra little pep talk i went and i submitted my form and i signed up for the new york city marathon so Whoa, this is in new just, york one yeah, wow november 3rd Ooh, it's happening girl. so this movie isn't just a favorite of the summer a favorite of the year this one's gonna be with me for the rest of my life Aww. because it is so tied to this milestone i adore this movie i think that speaks to jillian bell's performance for sure i love the script i i love the the way that it was directed i think that if you even look really closely at the movie in the beginning you can see like chaotic camera work versus like much more stable camera work mm -hmm. later on like it's way better than a movie like this even needs to be mm -hmm. and i was so teary by the end and i was so inspired and i i really get what you're saying i think and as someone who has previously done two marathons <gasps> It's oh, we need just, to talk. We do need to I talk. I didn't know. It's all about practice. That's the thing. It's like you've got to set your mind to something. You've got to believe in yourself. You have to execute a plan. And that's it. And that's mm. really all it takes because you can get there if you believe in yourself. And watching Jillian Bell figure that out just felt like it didn't even feel like she was acting. It felt like I was just watching her mm -hmm. do this. It was, she's amazing. 
I have so many follow-ups to you right now, but I have to keep this on track. <laughs> well, I, I have not run a marathon, uh, but I have uh, run a bath on a number of occasions <laughs> and been known to run my mouth. So uh, I can't compare with that. But no, I mean... Just, just as much a triumph of the human spirit. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, but I, I just, I mean, I've yet to find anybody who, who didn't like that movie, mm -hmm. who saw yeah. that this year. Everybody's come out with at least taking something positive away. All right, so we have one more movie left, and we save this one for last because it's the same for all three of us. Do I dare say one, two, three, and let's say it, or is that going to be really <laughs> yeah. awkward? Let's just try it. Ready? One, two, three. Book smart. <laughs> I freaking love this movie. I saw it in theaters three times this year. It gets better and better every time. I know I need to not jump into using the word comedy words, comedy classic too soon, mm. but I've seen this enough. This is one of those movies that there is no doubt that I'm going to keep watching it over and over and over again. I love these characters. I love the world she built. This is another one that is hilarious from start to finish. Olivia Wilde approaches it also with a real sensitivity that adds so many more layers to it. This is something else. Caitlin Deaver and Beanie Feldstein are some of the best of the generation, and I can't wait to see what they do next. I mean, yeah. this, this was a movie that was not marketed at people like me, men. And I think it was marketed specifically for women and i think that was the biggest tragedy about this movie mm, right. is the fact that there are so many men who i think will have not seen this movie who will have an absolute blast with this i mean i i literally i, I was talking to people about the movie and they were like okay you're you're enthusing about it but what is wrong with it and i swear to god i honestly couldn't find anything that didn't work for me with this movie whether it was yeah. performances the mm -hmm. writing the duration the soundtrack the setting the pace everything on for this movie was exactly how it should have been and it was just a perfect like i say i mean i'm, I'm a man and i didn't grow up in america but there are certain cultural things i was like i get that i understand it <laughs> the natural beats of this movie are about something so ridiculously specific but also so insanely broad it to, to be able to create that kind of movie i swear to god God, it's alchemy. It's one of the only movies this whole year I feel comfortable recommending to literally everyone. Yeah. Doesn't matter the age, doesn't matter gender, anything. It, it's it's so solid and it makes me really excited for Olivia Wilde as a director. Yes. Yeah, very I think much she's so. so magnificent. I think she's a talented actress. I loved this movie. I love the actresses. I took my husband and I think he had the same response you did. Like, why didn't I know about this? Yeah. And I I've told friends that don't live in in on the coasts because this movie disappeared pretty quickly from anywhere except New York and LA. Um, and it was it was such a great moment when my friend actually came to visit me and I was like, tonight we see Book Smart. And she just is like <laughs> Because it was a shame that it disappeared, but I'm glad that it's available streaming mm -hmm. now. Yeah, no, absolutely. And a really good test is the fact that it, it's on my wife's list of things that she wants to see. Nice. And my <laughs> wife is so untouchable by marketing. So if you've got a move in, it gets on my wife's list. A plus job. Awesome. A plus job. All right, job. keep spreading that book smart love. It's if you haven't seen it yourself, do check it out. And also, you know what else you should check out? ASAP, some more Collider content like Collider Sports Time. Here's a promo. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. New episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well, every Saturday and Sunday. If you're looking for even more Collider content, we have so much coming your way this weekend because you know what it is? It's D23. We're covering all the biggest events, so stay tuned to this channel. Make sure you tap that notification bell or smash it. That's what the kids say, right? Smash that notification bell. Sign up for all of the alerts you're going to be getting all through the weekend. You're laughing at me. I can't. Someone said that to me the other day, and I'm like, that sounds so wrong. I didn't realize that was a thing. I thought mm. the last I heard, smash was I, kiss. That, well, right? Uh, smash, oh, no. as far smash as I know, when you like smash something, is kiss. very uh -oh. much more than third. <laughs> oh, so that's what they were doing on Jersey Shore. Yeah. All right, yeah. All right, now that we've got that cleared wow. up, honorable <laughs> mentions. All right, we have to wrap this up fairly quickly. So going around the table, Gray, what are your two honorable mentions? Well, so John Wick 3 definitely is an honorable mention, but I'd like to mention just some movies that I hope will be honorable mentions. I can't wait to see movies like Fast Color and mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, The Farewell. And just like there are so many good ones that I'm waiting to see. 
But okay. John Wick 3, let's Keanu just with a sword on a horse. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of those movies. Um, I, I, honorable mentions for me, I mean, for the reasons I gave earlier, Avengers Endgame, mm-hmm. it, you know, delivered exactly what you expected in it with great aplomb. Uh, and Hobbs and Shaw, because there just haven't been that many movies this year that have been dumb but also <laughs> good in the most basic like shut your brain off eat popcorn and suck on a soda and that that for me was just literally it was that was white bread with butter on it and that that was it and it's exactly what i wanted so that's you know there you go i like want the simon thompson rating scale based on like food or just like those M- kinds mostly, of like verbal mostly responses foods, which is <laughs> why i'm trying like to lose that. weight at the moment but yeah no oh, yeah. seriously it's good it just it just you know i again i left and i was going like well that was totally pointless and dumb uh and a uh, great <laughs> which is fine sometimes yeah i gotta yeah. circle That's back to that 100%. one it's what it's supposed to be so great you're in luck because one of my honorable mentions is the farewell which i absolutely <gasps> adored again that was a movie that i saw at sundance and that was one of those ones where i walked out Tearing Sounding. up big time. First thing I did was call my grandmother. It's a really sweet family story. And that's another thing that puts the star on the map in a new way. Aquafina. I know she's made a big impression through supporting roles in some other films that we've seen, but this is a real lead performance. She is part of the heart of that ensemble, and she's great in it. And then, obviously, I have to shout out Crawl. Did neither of you see Crawl this I summer? I did see Crawl. Oh, my God, I loved it. Crawl I, uh... is so good. Crawl is... If I had to pick... All right, this is a lie, because there's a whole bunch of movies I would put on this list. But if I could pick many movies that I wish got way more love at the box office because they deserved it, it would be Crawl. I would put all the money into that marketing campaign, and I would make more noise about it, because I really do think that if there had been a stronger push for it, it could have kind of caught fire this summer and really gone the distance and been a major, you know, horror thriller survival movie hit. That is something else. It is not just, I mean, it's it's like one of those things where I go into it and I expect it to be a, uh, you know, like a silly crowd pleaser wild ride type thing. And it yeah. was, that is an expertly crafted thriller. The camera work in that is phenomenal. Yeah. Kaya Scottelario is something else. So the crawl, the crawl, the crawl and the farewell. The crawl. <laughs> but it like, but if on my food scale, like berry pepper is a scotch egg, and that's a good thing. Oh, scotch eggs are great. <laughs> right? Good choice. And it also taught me more about plumbing than I learned from any other summer movies <laughs> oh yet. Oh, my God. So to be honest with you, my pipes have never been better. Hey, you can take yeah. that however you want. <laughs> I know oh, what a wet you, wall Adam. is now. All right, guys, we're <laughs> out of here. Those are our favorite movies of summer 2019. We leave it to you now. Hit that comment section below. Smash Share it. your own. <laughs> no, you smash the subscribe oh, okay. button. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <Oops. laughs> you hit the comment section below and you put your favorite summer movies of 2019 right there let's go to the wide to say goodbye and a thank you to adam in the booth who is always helping us out here guys we hope you had a wonderful week with collider movie talk tune in for all the d23 coverage this weekend and then movie talk will be back 3 p.m pt live on monday see you then